So I'm a solo founder managing over half a million lines of code. They range from C-sharp to SQL to Nux to JavaScript to TypeScript, you name it. And one of the biggest problems that I've run into is with managing all of this code and complexity is how do I vibe code new features significantly faster? We've all been promised that AI is the way to go and it's going to revolution our lives and it's going to change things and it's going to take away our jobs and whatever. All right, you get the message. I'm trying to build feature much faster. I have a really large code base and I'm trying to figure out how I can get that productivity gains without breaking existing code or introducing more bugs, etc. And so in this video, I'm going to give you sort of a overall walkthrough of some of the things that's worked for me, some of the things that I'm still struggling with and stick around to the end. I'll give you some alternative tools that you could potentially evaluate. So with that, let me just walk through sort of the overall structure of the code. So at least you could understand what I'm actually dealing with. And then we could talk a little bit more about how I'm actually solving the problem altogether. So first of all, just to make sure that I'm not calling any BS here, this is my mono repo. I'll talk about that in a sec as well. I got a command here that I could run, which is a Rust framework that gives you a run of all of the code that's in the system. So these are the different languages that suggested I have about 250,000 lines of code in C, -sharp. obviously CSS. I got a Docker file in there, got some code that I'm just experimenting with. That's just experimental code right now inside of there. Types 12,000 lines of code. Where's JavaScript? There's JavaScript in here. Yep. JavaScript. 23,000 lines of code, not a small code base. Overall, 628,000 actual code. And in terms of lines, call it 900,000 lines of code. So decent side of code base, not the super largest code base in the world, but also not small and definitely large for a solo founder where I'm literally managing all of this on my own. So with that, let's just talk about just, I want to just take a step back and just tell you why I'm on this journey and what are my goals, what are my feature. And for, you know what, while I'm at it, let me just show you the application. I've shown this application before, but I also I kind of want to do it again. So I have two different products. So this is one application. It's a fairly decent sized application. Like I said, I've shown you the lines of code so you can get an idea of what it is. It's basically a management system. This is dummy data for Google. Just want to make sure that Google understands that this is dummy data. This is not real information in the system that you're looking at. Then I have a second application, which is basically a lead management system that helps you automate leads altogether and manage. Again, this is dummy information. The goal is to allow you to sort of automate the process of sending out leads through the system. It has a speed dialer and it has a few other things inside of there. So I'm showing you the application just so you understand that this entire thing was vibe coded. Now, the problem is, is that when you get to a really large set of code base, it becomes extremely complex to manage all of the complexity. This is why I've been evaluating tools like SpecKit in order to give me sort of a more consistent way of managing much larger code base. Now, I have a video on my channel about this. It's called SpecKit and sort of like my review and it, my honest review about at least that's what I think the title is. The problem with it is that it just didn't work. And, you know, SpecKit has a lot of potential. It has a lot of capabilities, but the reality is that it just hasn't lived up to the expectation in my humble opinion. Not taking away any single thing from the GitHub team and what they're working on. It's just that it hasn't necessarily worked for me. I have gotten some comments on that video about people suggesting other tools. I promise I will get to those tools because I am trying to think there's BMAD and then I forgot the other one late. But anyway, there's a few other alternatives. Right now, what I'm trying to do is get a solid home base on what I think is going to work for me, which is what I'll talk about in this video. And then in subsequent videos, I want to talk about sort of the alternatives that I'm experimenting with. So with that, SpecKit promised one thing. If you're not familiar with SpecKit, by the way, it's basically GitHub's solution to managing a really large code base by implementing test driven development so that you could kind of keep your models on track by coming up with a sort of a specification, a constitution, things where you could kind of outline all of the requirements for the work that you do for the project upfront. And then from there, you can iterate on it and get it to a place where, you know, like the code is solid. So that's kind of the idea with SpecKit. Hopefully that give you a thing. If that, go watch some of my videos on my channel. The problem that I run into is that you end up with a whole bunch of context all over the place, but it doesn't necessarily, at least I haven't been able to figure out a way to kind of structure SpecKit in a way to get the gains that I'm looking for in terms of like speed. The reality is I just haven't been able to figure it out. So with that, what I'm showing you here is just what's working for me today with managing half a million lines of code as a solo developer. 
So here I have the same benchmark that's actually showing you the lines of code a little bit more organized. So C sharps, SQL, TypeScript, YAML, the language that nobody likes, JSON, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Now the first thing that I'll say that one of the biggest problems that we run into altogether was the fact that originally this code base was kind of like a monolithic application. And over time we've kind of broken that up and changed it into sort of a microservice application. Now the problem with that is that we ended up having a bunch of GitHub repositories, like in the dozens, for each project. And to be honest with you, that became a nightmare. So I've since reverted on this. Lately, I've been going down the road of evaluating the concept of a monorepo. And if you're not familiar with monorepo, it basically means have it's literally all of your code in one location. Now, there's some benefits to this. And my understanding is that Google and Microsoft and Facebook, they all exercise this, which I find interesting because they don't really talk about this much, but they all do this. And it turns out that there's real benefits to this in the sense that each project can share the underlying baseline infrastructure. It could share resources. It could share tools. It could share libraries, etc. And there's huge upsides to doing that. So as a result, learning just some of the benefits of a monorepo, I've decided to do exactly that with my entire application altogether. So let me just give you sort of the structure of how I structure things, at least in my application. With the application, the first thing that I have is in the monorepo, I've kind of broken things down by APIs, apps, I got databases and docs and then scripts. And then there's a package folder somewhere in here. So with that, what I'm able to do is have all of the APIs in one location. So the APIs are then broken down by containers, functions, they're Azure, Lambda functions, if you're from the ADS world, and then workers, which are Cloudflare related stuff altogether. And then on the app side, we have multiple different apps. So they're all kind of broken up individually. And then they're kind of stitched together either by iframe or by URL or that kind of deal, separating my apps in smaller components, just so I could five code them pretty fast. And then use an iframe as a way to kind of stitch the apps all together. And somebody suggested I could do this with containers, but the goal here is I can deploy independently on multiple different projects and then kind of bring them together as one cohesive application. So that's sort of the overall structure of the app. Now there's been some benefits to this. So one of the biggest problems that we were having was the fact that if I wanted to program a front end, one of the problems that we were running into is I would have to vibe code the front end of this first. And then I would have to switch to my windows PC because a lot of this is still running on C sharp for the back end. And I would have to switch to my windows PC and open up visual studio and then program in Visual Studio and add those features. And the way how I was solving that problem was basically by getting the VS code AI model to kind of give me like an extract of the fields and the properties. And then I would use that as context for backend to then go program the backend. The problem with that is I was always kind of jumping through these hoops and having to craft a bunch of context to then copy and paste into a different project to be able to run the backend. And this was a constant annoying problem that I kept running into. So to solve that, the mono repo was basically the solution to that problem. By having every single thing in one location, both the backend and the front end, I'm able to co code the backend and code on the front end in one location. So that's really good. The things that I've been doing in order to facilitate this is ensuring that each project has its own copilot file. So let me explain what I mean by that. So let's go with this project as an example. So what I would do is I would have each project individually and I would open up that project. I would open up that project individually. And what I would do is come in here, settings, and then do generate agent instructions. And what this would do is for this particular project, it would generate a GitHub Copilot instruction specifically for this project. Now, this was the way that I'm able to create context around only this specific project. So I could make sure that the AI really understands exactly what this project is about. And this tool here, clicking on this menu here, clicking on generate agent has given a lot of context based on the details of the project. And it's basically generating a GitHub Copilot instructions file. So that's the one thing that I've been doing that I find very, very useful. And then secondly, if you notice here, there's no docs folder. So once it's complete, what I'll do is then 
create a docs folder that will have all of the documentation specifically for this project and then link it back to the copilot for instructions file. Okay, so now that we have our GitHub copilot instructions file, it's very generic, it's very standard, but really and truly what it's doing is given sort of the overall architecture of the project and it's given sort of like the different file structure of the project, which is fine, but it doesn't have enough details about what the project is about in terms of like functionality, features, etc. So then what I would do, so then what I would do is create a separate file called in a docs folder, basically documentation about the project. So we're going to do that right. Can you create a docs folder and ensure that you review all of the details of this project? And once you gather all that information, put it in, all that information in a docs folder in the MD file, and then you link that back to the GitHub Copilot instructions file. The project is focused on, it's an internal dashboard. So it's a dashboard that allows us to see the entire state of all applications, projects, etc. Okay. So what I'm basically doing is creating the documentation and adding a docs folder and then linking it back to the GitHub Copilot instructions. So essentially what I did is I did this for every single project. And by doing this for every project, each project, I could work on it individually to kind of work within the context of that project, but I can still revert back to the higher level which is the master project, but I can still revert back to the higher level, which is the master project that has more details. In a minute, you're going to see it's going to create a docs folder and that docs folder will have details for things. Most of the projects have it. I haven't necessarily gone through and done it for every one of them, but most of the projects have that GitHub Copilot instructions folder. Now, once I actually do that, then I have on the main level, I have a docs folder and this docs folder has reference to all of the individual projects and the documentation for every single thing. And I'm linking it back to these documents to the app folder and also linking this back to the GitHub Copilot instructions at the master level. So in other words, there's a master GitHub Copilot instructions that has instructions that this entire project, it's a mono repo and that it has multiple projects inside of it. And it basically outlines all of the different apps and exactly what each folder does and exactly what each app does. And it breaks that down. And then it references the docs folder to have the specific details for each one of the application. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm creating sort of this chain this hierarchy chain between sort of like my individual projects and the higher level projects, the higher project, the root level project, if that makes sense. Now, once I get that in place, I'm able to program at the high level. So say, for example, I wanted to do something both on the front end and the back end. I would then program that on this level. So I would say something like, I want to be able to improve my fraud mobile app. And in order to do that, you need to basically make a backend change altogether. So that's what I would do. And that allowed me to get more gains in terms of productivity. But the truth is where the real unlock is coming from is when it comes to task management. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So this is our task board that's managing sort of like to-do list tasks, customer requests, etc. What I've noticed now is because of the fact that I now have a mono repo in place, I'm able to get significant more gains in terms of vibe coding from the tasks altogether by using GitHub Copilot, which is not to be confused by the way with VS Code Copilot. They're two separate things. So what do I mean by that? If I click in on the task as an example, workflow business rules, etc. Right? Now I can basically put in, let's say, let's pretend that this task was a front end and a back end problem. I could say for example, this task is related to the mobile project and it's also related to the internal project. And you need to look into the SnapSuite API project in order to fix the issue around business rules. Just as an example, this is just a made up example. But my point is I can now make a comment on this task specifically about the problem that this task is related to. And then I could at copilot. So once I do that, now I can click on assign to copilot. And what this will do is I could just point it to the mono repo because I could set it to the branch, click on assign, and then copilot can now start working on that task because copilot now within that mono repo now has context of this particular task, the requirements. It now has context of my front end application and it also has context of my back end application. And so I could kind of kick this off and one of the things that I've been doing of late is before I go to bed, I've been trying to practice this, this notion of just kicking off like 
five or six different tasks that I know are not going to create conflicts from the code standpoint. So that when I get up in the morning and I look at my code base, I'm basically doing a bunch of PRs. And that's been a huge unlock for me. It's still not perfect because sometimes, you know, the AI doesn't necessarily, sometimes it works on the wrong project or whatever. The cool thing about that is it's a PR, so you can just kill the PR and just continue along your merry way. But this has been a big game changer for me. And I'm hoping to kind of get some more productivity gains by doing this sort of background task type of stuff. I noticed the universe released a bunch of new stuff that I'm actually excited to try around this model. So the real question here is like, is this model better than using SpecKit? And the truth is, I can't really say a lot more about the SpecKit right now other than it hasn't been working for me in a way that makes sense. But what I can say is that this model that I've come up with, which is not necessarily revolutionary or any single thing, I just want to be clear with that, it's just what's working for me right now, it's giving me some productivity gains because now I have context on a high level about all of the different projects and individual level for each project. And the model, I don't know if it's because it's Claude Sonnet 4.5, is that's what I'm using as my daily driver, but it's definitely very good at starting with the GitHub Copilot instructions file and then selectively add in context, which is it might add context on the project level or it might add context on the root level for the docs. And with that, I'm definitely gaining some productivity. And also I'm noticing that the model is staying on track significantly better. But then more importantly, whenever the model makes some changes, fix an issue, a bug problem, whatever it is, it will then update both the docs folder in the project level and the docs folder at the high level. Sometimes I just tell it to just work on the high level depending on what's going on. So that's been a fundamental shift in the way that I've been thinking about this stuff all together. Now, the cool thing is that if I jump from project to project or from LLM to LLM, so for example, sometimes I'm jumping between now Claude and I'm jumping to the Copilot agent CLI, so open AI agent, I'm able to use the exact same context window for documentation because it knows, because it's familiar with that. So that's been a huge game changer for me. So anyway, hopefully that's giving you some value and hopefully you kind of gotten some sense of like, what is it that I'm doing? The tool that I'm actually evaluating right now is the BMAD method. So I'm going to do a video specifically on that, on BMAD, which is sort of another way of, it's an alternative to spec kit, which tries to break down tasks in more sort of smaller components. And I'm seeing some good positive things about it. I just don't have enough knowledge to kind of give you a full video on it right now, but stay tuned for that. If you really want to know some of my take on that, subscribe to the channel. I'll definitely put out a video on that. By the way, I just started my new group, which is called Vibe Code to Profit Accelerator. So if that's something you're interested in, check the link in the bio, sign up for that. We'd love to have you inside of there. We're basically developers and entrepreneurs learning how to build code for production basically to make a profit. Join the community. And with that, I'll see you in another video. Have yourself a wonderful day.